Holy Heroes, Thomas Beckett, by Ian Wilson. Few saints exemplify the virtue of fortitude more than Thomas Beckett. Though much of his earlier life was spent in avarice and corruption, his later years were an expression of piety. Born in London in the year 1118, Beckett was the son of a wealthy wine merchant and enjoyed a thorough ed theological education at the best universities in Western Europe. His first major position was clerk to the Archbishop of Canterbury. He eventually rose to the position of Archdeacon, the official assistant to the Archbishop. He became friends with Henry II, who appointed him as Chancellor in 1155. Becket lived large during his years as Chancellor. He was known for lavish feasts, expensive clothing, and large estates. He transformed the office from a minor bureaucratic role to a major position within King Henry's court. The king and chancellor became close friends, going on many a hunting trip in the English countryside. Henry II even made Becket the personal tutor to his own son. At the time, Henry II was having a rather tense dispute with the church. The church asserted that crimes, even serious crimes such as theft and rape, involving members of the clergy or church property should be tried by the church. Henry, meanwhile, wished to punish these crimes under British law. There was also a great deal of difference in terms of the punishments for members of the clergy and lay people. Lay people might expect to be fined, mutilated, or even executed while a priest might simply be defrocked. Wishing to gain an edge over the church, Henry appointed his loyal friend Thomas Becket to Archbishop of Canterbury in 1162, a rather controversial move on his part. Becket seems to have had a complete change of heart during this time. By the next year, he was a completely different man. He sold all his fancy furniture and clothing and developed a passion for good works and study of the scripture. Becket defended the church's right from the king's impositions, angering Henry II and other members of the royal court. As a result, Henry called together a meeting of all the officials of the land to firm up the common laws of Britain. Thomas Becket and the bishops were also in attendance. King Henry made his nobles and officials of the church swear an oath to adhere to and uphold the laws of Britain. Becket too swore this oath, but he later rescinded when Henry II's demands on the church became too much. The archbishop ended up taking refuge in a monastery in France, while the king confiscated all his property. In 1170, the Pope declared the king's coronation was invalid, and the king would need to be re-crowned by the legitimate Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Becket. The king and the archbishop reconciled, allowing Becket to return to his episcopal duties unhindered. But this was not to last. Becket began excommunicating the bishops who had not supported him in his dispute with the king. Frustrated with the bishop's obstinacy, the king exclaimed, Will no one rid me of this turbulent priest? Unfortunately, four knights took the king's outburst seriously. These men accosted Becket, demanding that he accompany them to Westminster. When Becket refused, they took Becket's seneschal instead. Not satisfied, the knights returned, confronting Becket in the middle of mass and repeating their demands. Again, Becket refused. The knights drew their swords, prompting the congregation to flee in fear. They took hold of Becket, but the archbishop held fast to a column. The men struck Becket with their weapons, injuring a clerk in the frenzy. Becket died on December 29, 1170, having forfeited everything for the church he loved.